A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm silver! Away! Traveling over a hundred miles to see a doctor wasn't Sam Kemp's idea of a good time. But his daughter, Linda, had insisted upon it. Consequently, the rugged old cattle rancher was slightly annoyed when Dr. Eldon avoided a direct question. Speak up. What's the matter? Can't you talk? Uh, uh, excuse me, Sam. What'd you say? Take that infernal stethoscope contraption out of your ears and maybe you can hear. All right. Well, button your shirt, Sam. I'm through with the examination. Your dad burned right, you are. Now I want to know what this tomfoolery is all about. I've answered your questions, now you answer mine. Very well. My diagnosis indicates an acute cardiac condition. Aggravated Talk by... plain English. Don't hide behind a lot of fancy words. All right. This ought to be plain enough. You've got a bad heart, Sam. A very bad heart. <laughs> I don't believe it. And in a man your age, that's serious. Hogwash. Listen, Eldon, you old sawbones... I've known you for over 40 years, and you can't tell me Then that... I'll tell Linda. She's outside in the waiting room, isn't she? Sure. Linda and Matt Fleming, my foreman, came up here with me on this fool trip. Uh, Good. Linda? Oh, Linda? Yes, Dr. Eldon? Will you come in for a moment, please? Oh, of course. Where's Matt? Ain't he waiting out there, too? Uh, Matt said he had some private business to take care of. He'll meet us back at the hotel. Well, it's just as well. What I have to say is a family matter and concerns no one else. What do you mean, Doctor? Is there... Don't pay any attention to him. The old pill roller's talking through his hat. No, I'm not. Sam's a sick man. And unless he follows my advice, I won't be responsible for what'll happen. What is it? I, I mean, what's the trouble? A heart condition. A serious one. He won't believe me, so I'm telling you. Thank you, Doctor. What kind of treatment is that? Oh, for? don't listen to her. Be quiet, Dad. Huh. Now, Dr. Eldon. Well, the principal thing to remember is this. No violent exercise, no exertion, and above all, no excitement. 
I understand. If he observes those rules, he'll probably outlive all of us. Your dad burned right a will. Otherwise, excuse me, folks. Oh, Matt, I, I didn't hear you come in. I just happened to be... Well, Sam, what does the sawbone say about you? I'm fit as a fiddle made out of wang leather and sawdust. Ain't that right, Doc? Well, I... Uh, Dad's feeling good, Matt. The examination was very successful. Glad to hear it. Then we'll be heading back for the ranch today? Well, no, not today. It might be better if we rest. I mean, wait over here in Falls City until tomorrow morning. Uh, that's a good idea. Or oh, uh, I just remembered an errand I've got to do. I'll see you and your pa at the hotel, Miss Linda. Sure, Matt. Don't forget to send one of them telegrams so the boys will meet the train tomorrow afternoon at Cottonwood Junction. I won't forget. Do it right now. I, uh, I want to send two telegrams, both to the same place. All right. Where do they go? Cottonwood Junction. Here, I've got them all written out. And here's the money to pay for it. Thanks. I'll put them right on the wire. Hey, uh, you're Slim Kirby, aren't you? From the Circle Dot Spread? Yep. Telegram you've been hanging around here you're waiting for. Guess this must be it. Just came in. All right, read it to me. It says, everything turned out like I expected. Arrive tomorrow afternoon. You know what to do. Sign Matt. Thanks. Yeah, this is kind of funny. Can't figure it out. What do you mean? This is the second message that's come in today. Signed the same way. The other one was for the ranch hands out of Sam Kemp's bar K. I figured that one was from Matt Fleming, Sam's foreman. But he wouldn't be telegraphing you. You so know I what's the matter with most brass pounders like you? No. What do you mean? They figure too much. And that ain't healthy. I don't understand. You will, Buster. Later on. It was late the following afternoon when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up their horses near the lonely railroad station at Cottonwood Junction. Oh, who's it? Who's got no fella? No fella. Get it, big fella. <laughs> this watering trough tunnel back to the railroad station. Horses need a drink. Uh, I'm scout. Come on, son. Come, Come on, boy. Come on. Look, Kimasabi. See Polo over there? In big fella. Yes, he is. Hmm. Wonder why anyone would tie a bull to an iron stake out here in the sun. There are shaded loading pens on the other side of the station. I mean not know. There are two saddle horses in the shade. Yeah, no sign of the men who ride them. The station looks deserted. I think... Uh, let's look inside, Tonto. Ah. Are you the station agent here? Listen, no owl hoot can bust Whether in I'm here. Whether I'm an outlaw or not has nothing to do with cruelty to animals. What's that? There's a bull outside chained to an iron stake. Yeah? What of it? With the sun as hot as it is, and an empty loading pen in the shade, why can't it be moved? That's my business. I'm making it mine. Yeah? Listen, hard case, you and your engine part better mosey along. You might get hurt. You understand? Yes, I think I do. Since when do station agents carry guns? You ask for this owl hoot, I'm going no, to you're show not. you. No, oh, my hand! Hey, Lip! Lip, come out here! What the... Hello, watch out. There's another door back of you. Ah, am easy. Drill him, Lip! Oh! oh. 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 Where's it? Come on, Lip! Oh. Hello, you're hurt. Oh, not bad, not bad. You go catch Crook. Oh, they're not important. Here, let me see where that bullet nicked you. It's shoulder. Let me fix it. Here, we'll make a bandage out of this neckerchief. Oh. Oh. Now, let me get this bound. Oh. Easy. There, that better? Uh, yeah. Uh, Crook come from other room. You not see him. Neither did I until. Wait a minute. There's a dead man. 
man lying in that back room, Toto. He's been clubbed over the head. You think Crook killed him? I'm sure of it. Probably the station agent. But I can't see any reason for killing... Well, this is just a small junction, no Wells Fargo branch or... Kimasabi. Train come. Yes. Under the circumstances, we can't risk being seen. You feel better, Tonto? Uh-huh. Come on, then. we we'll get the horses and wait in that clump of cottonwoods. Dad. Now be careful. Watch the steps. Take it easy, Mr. Kemp. Easy. Take on my arms, both of you. Yeah. I'm not so old I have to be lifted off a train. All aboard! <clears throat> Station's deserted. Now where are the thunderations the buckboard that's supposed to meet us? You send that telegram like I told you, Matt? Sure, sure I did. The boys will be here pretty soon. Well, the only thing we can do is wait. Hey, Linda, what's that red contraption you're carrying? Looks like an umbrella. It's a parasol, Dad. A present from Matt. He bought it for me in Falls City. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> I thought Miss Linda would like something fancy to keep the sun out of her eyes. Yeah, guess women folks like those bright-colored goo-goos. <laughs> I never could see much sense in Wait them. Wait here. I'll go ask the station agent whether he's seen any of our ranch hands. I declare, a bunch of lazy, no-good cow folks ain't got gumption enough to meet a train. Now, Dad, remember what Dr. Eldon said about getting excited. Who's excited? <laughs> now Matt's disappeared. How are we ever going to get home? All the... right, Dad. You wait here with the valises. I'll see what's happened to Matt. man didn't go into the station, Toto. He walked around to the other side. Ah. And now the girl with the red parasol is going he to get... Hobby. Look! The bull. He's gotten loose. And if he sees that red parasol... Linda! Watch out! Run, Linda! Run, and that vomit will get you! Let him off, Toto. Ah. Set up. Lose your gun. I'll try to reach the girl. Get him on. Come on, Silver. No. Pull the parasol away. Throw it. Linda! Steady. Linda. Stand still. Up you come. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, for a minute I thought I was... Why, you, you're wearing a mask, an outlaw. That was a narrow escape. Here, I'll put you down. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Me kill Paul Kimasabi. Good. And an Indian. Where did you two come from? Silly big fella. We were... We were behind that grove of cottonwood. Linda, are you all right, Miss Linda? I tried to warn you that that... Say, who's this outlaw? I, I don't... Dad, he's lying over there. And... Oh! Well, who are you? What's the idea of I that... was just going to ask how the bull happened to get loose. Well, how do I know? I don't know Dad. anything. Dad! Dad, he... Miss Linda! What... He's dead, man. Dad's dead. Uh, are you sure? He ran, tried to help me. It must have been too much for his heart. Oh, I... I'm uh, sure sorry, Miss Linda. Uh, Accidents like this if are... If it all... was an accident... Uh, what do you mean? Seems strange that an angry bull just happened to get loose when you were carrying a red parasol. Not any stranger than a masked owl hoot popping up out of thin air. Well, thank heaven for that. If you hadn't been there... There what... might have been two murders instead of one. Murder? Oh, well, you don't Now, think... listen, mister. I don't know who you are. I don't care. But I don't like the way you're slinging words around. Man, don't... And what's more, I'm turning you and the red skin over to the law. Now, get your hands up, both of you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, to continue our story, 
Ignoring Matt Fleming's command to raise their hands, the Lone Ranger and Tonto walked calmly toward the drawn gun. I said reach. Both of you. We heard what you said. And you'd better get him up fast or I'll... Hello. No, no, you can't. No, let go of my arm, you red... You drop gun. I drop gun. That's no. enough, Tonto. Oh, you sneaked up on me. Grabbed my wrist before... All of us are interested in your explanations. You dirty owl hoot. You and the engine gang up on one man. I'm sure you turned that bull loose. And did it on purpose. That's a lie. You know the two men who killed the station agent less than an hour ago? The station agent? I saw them. <laughs> one was a tall, slim fellow who called the other man Lip. Slim? Lip? Why, Matt, that sounds like Slim Kirby and Lip Braddock from the Circle Dock. No. No, it couldn't be. If there's been any killing around here, this is the army who did it. You seem pretty sure. If there wasn't two of you buzzers uh, against me... I... Tonto, hold my gun belt, will you? Ah, uh, not me, hold it. Now, neither of us has a gun. The odds are even. What are you going to do about it? Plenty. I'm waiting. Why, you... This was your idea. Oh, no! He isn't hurt. He'll be all right. Why did you do that? He asked for it. Who are you? Who you are and who's behind these murders is more important. I'm Linda Kemp. That's Matt Fleming. He's Dad's foreman of the bar cave. You see, we had taken Dad to a doctor in Fall City. He had a weak heart. And... Oh, I understand. <laughs> you have my deepest sympathy. You... You don't talk like an outlaw. I'm not. And I want to help you. But how? Do you mind telling me how long you've owned that little red parasol that uh, caused so much trouble? Why? Matt gave it to me as a present just before we got on the train in Falls City. But I'm sure he didn't know anything like this would happen. Maybe. Uh, who's coming? Otto, can you see? Uh, four, maybe five men. Them ride hard. Oh, it, it must be the boys from the ranch. They, they should have been here earlier. They'll but... help you take care of your father. Here, Silver, scout. Well, where are you going? To the next town and report the station agent's murder to the sheriff. Steady, big fella. <laughs> ready, Otto? Uh, Be ready. I, I can't figure you out. Come on, Silver. Get up, scout. On the evening of the third day after her father's sudden death, Linda sat alone on the darkened veranda of the Bar K Ranch House. She was still shocked and bewildered by the strange events that had taken place. Miss Linda? Oh, hello, Matt. Might have found you alone. There's some things we've got to talk over. Things? Yeah, business. Now that your paw's gone, how about everything here at the Bar K? We'll carry on, of course. That's the way Dad would have wanted it. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that, especially the we part. What do you mean? You'll find out about it tomorrow. A lawyer's coming out from Fall City. What in the world are you talking about? Why, your paws will. The lawyer's bringing it with him. I didn't know Dad ever made a will. Oh, yeah. Sam and I talked the whole thing over about six months ago. Of course, neither of us had any idea it would be needed so soon, but that's the way he wanted I it. I can't so. believe it until I actually see that. What are you trying to say, Matt? Well, it's no secret. You'll hear it from the lawyer tomorrow anyway. Hear what? That Sam left this whole layout to me. What? Yep. Lock, stock, and barrel. Wait, it's ridiculous. My, my own father leave the bar cage to a, a stranger? Well, I'm not exactly a stranger, Linda. I've worked for Sam for over ten years. This, this is preposterous. I... But I, uh, I know how you feel, Linda. And I'm willing to, to do the right thing. The right? And what is that? Share it with you. I think you're entitled to half the bar, Kay. You're very generous, Matt. Sure. We'll run the place together. After all, a man's got to be married sometime. Married? Well, I guess you know I've been sweet on you, Linda. First you tell me the ranch is no longer my home, and, and then you offer to marry me. Why not? I wouldn't marry you, Matt Fleming, if you owned every ranch in Texas. Kind of snippy, ain't you? You'll change your tune tomorrow. One thing that'll never change is my opinion about you. Good night, Mr. Fleming. Good evening. Uh, the outlaw, what are you I've doing? I've been, uh, been waiting for you. I came in the back door and I couldn't help but overhear what your foreman just said. It isn't true. Dad wouldn't have made a will I, without... I'm sure he wouldn't. Just as I'm sure that a man is responsible for two murders... 
won't stop at forgery. Murder? What do you mean? The station agent at Cottonwood Junction and your father. But Dad died of a heart attack when that mad bull got loose and saw my parasol. Which was bright red, given to you for that very purpose. Uh, Matt Fleming. Who else could it be? Why, yes, I... I'm going to ride right into town and see Sheriff McCain. No, no. Fleming would deny the whole thing. His lawyer would fail to show up tomorrow. Your life would be in danger from now on. But I... I've got to do something. If you let me help, I think we can make Matt convict himself. But how? Call your foreman and tell him you've changed your mind. Changed my... I will not. I detest Matt Fleming you, and I... Uh, you don't understand. Now listen carefully and I'll explain what I mean. It was less than an hour later when Matt Fleming walked away from the big ranch house for the second time that evening. He was in a much better mood this time. Matt. Oh, Matt. What? Oh. Oh, it's you, Slim. Yeah. Me and Lip been waiting here by the corral. I've been talking to the girl. Has she caught on yet? When I first sprung it on her, she was boiling mad. Then a few minutes ago, she sent word out to the bunkhouse. Said she wanted to see me. Yeah? I guess she got the thing then over because now she says maybe old man Kemp did make a will. Well, my lawyer gets here tomorrow. I'm we'll glad be... to hear it's working out. Me and Lip rode over for our payoff. You promised 200 cash right after the job. Yeah. What <laughs> job? I had to do it myself. That wasn't our fault. That mask hombre and the redskin ambled into the depot and queered everything. We'd no sooner shot the stage in Aiden than he I know and... all about it. Then shell out some money and we'll be drifting back to the circle dot. I, uh... Not gonna welsh on the payoff for you, Matt. Oh, I'll give it to you. Right now. In cash. But there's 200 more in it. If you'll handle another little job. What kind? Well, Linda just told me that she didn't doubt my word. But just to be on the safe side, she's gonna go through all of Kemp's papers tomorrow to make sure he didn't write another will. Well, what does that mean? How do I know? Maybe the old coot did make a will. I don't think so. But I've got to be sure. What's all that got to do with Lip and me? Now, you armories wait a little while till around midnight. You can get into the house easy. The old man kept all of his papers in a big roll-top desk. It's in the front room. And you want us to look for a will, is that it? Sure. Well, why don't you do it yourself? You know the inside of the well, house. If there's any it? argument at the showdown tomorrow, I've got to have a perfect alibi. Uh, there's uh, 200 more in it, whether we find anything or not, huh? I've got the cash here in my pocket. I'll wait for you right here. What do you say, Slim? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Good. I'll meet you here just after midnight. Matt! Matt, where the devil Quiet. have you... Not so loud. Did you find anything? Yeah. This was stuck in one of them pigeonholes in the desk. What? Let me see it. Uh, there's writing on the envelope. It tells you what it is. Oh, it's too dark to see. We can't risk a light out here. Come on into the barn. There's a lantern in there. Now, oh, strike a light, Slim. Yeah. See? It's just what Slim told you. Read what it says. Last will and testament of Samuel Kemp. So the old coot did write out a will. Ain't you gonna open it? Sure, sure. The lucky thing I thought of sending you... What? What's the matter? Why, the... there's no paper in this envelope. What do you mean? Nothing but an old blotter. And a soggy one at that. Look. Well, I'll be done. You loco halfwits. Why didn't you make sure How about... How did we know what was in it? It says right there on the front... It's a it... blotter. You can see that, can't you? If you can't see, feel. Yeah, you're right. How about our payoff, man? I'm not paying on a dime till I... Hey... This envelope proves there is a will in there someplace. Come on, show me exactly where you found it. How much longer do you think we'll have to wait? For? They'll be back, I'm sure of that. Unless I miss my guess, Matt Fleming will be with them. Every time Quiet, I think... Quiet, I think we have visitors. Over something, not yet. When we get to the desk, that's 
Right over there. Quiet. You never can tell. That's right, you. Matt. You never can tell. What? Who's that? Light the lamp, Linda. All right. Remember, my guns are covering all three of you. What? Slim! Slim, look! It's the same mask hey, on. Watch out. He's grease lighting with those guns. I'll no, you won't. Oh, my arm. A slug right through my arm. You're lucky I didn't try to kill you. Now, put up your hands, all of you. Mine are up. Here. Good. What's going on here? Sheriff McCabe. These are the men I was telling you about, Sheriff. Matt Fleming and the two riders from the Circle Dot Ranch. They killed the station agent at the junction, probably because he asked too many questions when they brought that wild bull up there to meet the train. Yeah, I'll take care of him. And Matt Fleming killed Linda's father. He tried to kill her. That's a lie. See, he knew the old man had a weak heart, so he tried what he thought was a perfect scheme. He was going to follow that up with a forged will. Lies, all lies. You can't prove a thing. And why did the three of you break in here and search Mr. Kemp's desk? We didn't. We were just going by. Ah, that story won't work, Matt. You're convicted with the same color with which you killed the man you worked for and tried to cheat his daughter. Color? Well, what do you mean? Look at these fingers, Sheriff. They're stained with red ink. It came from a blotter which Miss Linda soaked in ink earlier this evening. The other half of it is on Mr. Kemp's desk. Why? You're going to hang, Fleming. No. And so are these other two. Good. Well, adios, Miss Kemp. Oh, oh, wait. You can't leave now, not until you... Why, he's gone. And I still don't know his name. Why, that's simple, Linda. You've been talking to the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.